Okay, back into the game, I believe. Let's just check this for a second. Yeah, it's recording. Cool. Um, all right, so here I am again in the dark in Minecraft. Pretty much the perpetual state of the game. And all the way, to, oh, so I wanted to get rid of the eyeball first. Such a weird conversation I'm having with myself and the rest of the internet. Um, yeah, so anyhow, digging round into the dark. I kind of want a few pieces to bring down with me, but I need a bit of a few more trees first. Anyhow, um, I've talked about stuff I was planning on going on with computer security of all things, because at least I thought that might be interest or of interest to some of you out there. Um, oops. I think I just did that to trigger someone, so anyhow, oh no, I'm down my last pick. Timing is everything, I suppose. Um, yeah, and sort of the things you should be aware of to keep yourself, among others, aware of what's going on in the internet. Because it gets kind of interesting with uh, things in the area of computer security because all the old scams or con jobs that have existed still exist. And they will continue to exist and they are then amped up on the whole problem of computer with computers because they become far more powerful as a as a technique uh, if you think of it you know if an individual person tries to con somebody out of their money then what's going to happen of course is that that individual can will have to then I suppose pull the con on whoever they're trying to confuse or uh, dupe and so it restricts their reach. But when you get into, say, the Nigerian princess scam or any of the classic scams that seem to come across the email, all of a sudden, instead of reaching out to a single person, this scammer is reaching out to thousands, tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands. And that becomes a massive problem for people surviving the internet and this is sort of brings about the whole thing of basically don't trust it unless you know them uh, idea of basically communication and this can be both a, a good thing and a bad thing because there are plenty of opportunities out there in terms of what's available for you but without some common sense of course all of a sudden you're going to have to start dealing with um, people who are trying to deceive you out of any possible uh, income or you know, out of your life savings. I mean, there's plenty of cases out there um, and that sort of stuff. And of course, that's just one of many possible scams that exist out there on the internet. So the first, I suppose, survival tactic is not to deal with unsolicited emails. And the general rule of thumb is, is, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And this is just sort of, I suppose, sensible, common sense kind of measures for surviving out there in the big, wide world. Did that come from up there? Um, so that's just you know, the first of a number of, I suppose, con jobs that exist. And the whole vein of, of this sort of style of uh, I don't want to call it computer hacking but basically people hacking to take the systems that already exist in the world and use them to your own advantage um, as deceptive as it is really needs to be oops there's something out there I heard something in my ear um, yeah it needs to be examined because of course as potential IT professionals you are going to have to deal with it and that's what it boils down to and so making people aware of the likely occurrences the most likely outcomes and how to stay aware of and deal with these people when these things occur because it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when you know um yeah and it's not just uh, the fact that there's individuals who are doing this the tech 
all the IT techniques that we've done in terms of data processing uh, from for one of my classes anyway, um, this becomes an ability to profile individuals and then examine them for basically no good purpose. Um, and this is, I suppose, the great power of what Facebook has over people and also the terror that it in, um, inflicts. Uh, and I've mentioned it before at a couple of times, there's a, 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 so there's a documentary, for want of a better term, on Netflix uh, called The Big Hack or The Great Hack. And it's basically how this idea was then weaponized in terms of manipulating people and uh, political outcomes. So the, the art of persuading people to achieve your goals, and that's in essence what it is. So this is one of many possible ways where computers can be used and abused for what really mounts for um, not a particularly good outcome. So making yourself aware of the style of scams that exist and not accessing or not following up unsolicited emails with those sorts of things is a is the first step of computer security really the second is really not opening stuff that you don't know so when i say opening i mean opening executable files attached to emails in some cases the i love you virus from oh i don't know when that occurred uh i'd have to look up the dates but there's a virus that was actually an email attachment, which was just, a, I think, a Word document. But in the background of that, they had a macro running that caused all manner of um, damage because what it would do is that particular virus would uh, basically run in the background of this this message you received, from, supposedly from a friend. Well, actually, it was from a friend, but we'll get to that in a sec. And lo and behold, you would end up with a whole stack of, um, you end up sending out, sorry, a whole stack of emails because what it would do is it would look through your contacts, examine who's in there and basically uh, list them all and send this email to every single one of them. So there was a stage on the internet where there's a lot of this stuff just bouncing around because um, people were sharing these sorts of pieces of information without a huge amount of sense. Oh, I can make a bow, brilliant. So, and it was unintentional. They weren't consciously open, you know, they were opening up their emails and going, oh, I, I should click on this thing and share it. It was just automatic in the background. And so this is the second thing about um, email safety. And this is just email and we can get a lot more details in here in a few minutes. Did I just grab the wrong thing? Yes, I did. Uh, but the starting point is basically practicing that sort of email safety. So if you happen to be in my um, vet IT class, you would have noticed that the email, the virus that I sent out to all the students, which of course was a dummy virus because it wouldn't work. I thought I made arrows, flint, stick. I just didn't make errors. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, the challenge there is to how do you deal with that? And most of the system, computer systems these days, what they've done is they've basically set it up so that it will no longer open up email attachments automatically. Or in this case, open up um, the macros associated in the background of emails automatically. And that's just a standard security measure these days, but back then it was actually really important. Um, uh, important vector, attack vector for this virus. Don't ask me why I'm chopping down a lot of trees. I just like woodwork. Because it wouldn't work. Do -do -ching. And the bad jokes fly. Strangely enough, eating this chicken reminds me of Shinjeki no Kyojin, or Attack on Titan, or as I prefer to call it, Chicken No Chicken. 
So, yeah, anyhow, it's as attack vectors for potential virus outbreaks. This is an important one to be aware of, and there's no guarantee that something like this, where a enterprising young computer nerd discovers a, another way of causing this stuff to happen. Oh, wow, mycelium and a hill and other such things. So they're two fairly basic um, security things that you'll need to be aware of. And as enterprising young computer users, I would hope that you are. Yes, I'm destroying my axe. But I'm not overly worried by this. So, yeah, just to, as a basis, rule of thumb, computer security. If you don't know where it comes from, don't touch it. Even if it causes, you know, problems. And sometimes these, what's known as attack vectors, can get quite complex and quite intricate. And also, I suppose, more t technically complicated they are, the less likely they're to work. Hello, sheepy. Um, but the less... If people are aware of it, they can fight against it, right? But if it's an uncommon thing, then they're less likely to be on guard against it. So this is where keeping up to date with the general literature for around the area of computer security is actually important. But having that fundamental knowledge of basically the kind of malware that's out there and how you can what you have to do to deal with it, really. Actually, no, I've got to do this other one first. So, it's important to have that knowledge up your sleeve, really. About um, virus and potential problems that will be, can be caused by them. So, I've been rabbiting on for ages, it feels like. I've had a wander outside, seen this virtual sunlight, and woohoo, it doesn't burn. Uh, now, to head back downstairs, but before I head further downstairs, I'm going to need some more cobble stairs. Because otherwise I can't go down the stairs. All right, that should do. Load up on those. And I'm not going to need that much. I'll hold on to the dirt just in case, and I should be done. Actually, that will become useful later on. Wrong way. Yeah, so there are plenty of other forms of malicious or malware, or otherwise known as viruses. Um, but it's really... Well, that didn't work for me. Or maybe it does. That's not going to work. Oh, it does too. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Things such as Trojan horses, key loggers, and other sorts of things. So, a Trojan horse, straight out of Greek legend, basically what it's about is that when you open up a said piece of software, it does whatever it's going to do. Uh, in the background. So much like the Greek Trojan horse, you think it's safe and then it hits you where it hurts. And gee whiz, that sounds like the lovely virus I was just talking about. Uh, don't ask me about the names. I have no idea why they choose the names for these sort of things. Um, but yeah, so again, awareness, security. I really don't like that sound. Um, Oh wait, this goes over a thing and down again. Uh, yeah. Sinister background noises. Get suspicious. Um, yeah, so that's one example. Uh, another example is the uh, a worm. So a worm is a small scale, uh, similar to a, it's another piece of malware basically. 
Um, it has some operations similar to a virus, but basically what it does is, where a virus is like a biological virus and replicates, I'm just blocking it for dead end here. Uh, ah, there you are. He's beating me up, I don't like that. Um, yeah, so where a, a worm is, a virus is just a self-replicating thing. The idea of behind a worm is that it worms its way into the network that it's uh, released on. So that instead of, oh, I thought I saw coal. Instead of just having something that replicates across a broad network, it's actually designed to burrow into a computer network so a virus is something you can double click on or run in the background it'd be linked into a file and it's something that you'd open up inadvertently it sort of falls into the category of what i was talking just previously uh trojan horses but when you get to worms they're designed to come from outside and burrow them their way into the system the most famous example of this i can think of is the robert t morris uh internet worm so back in it would have been the late 80s 88 or 89 i think it was he managed to accidentally shut down the internet for three or four days. The, the controls are subtly different in this version of Minecraft, strangely enough. So yeah, with the worm, he, he basically, it was designed to go from one area, one system, and use up a, a, a user floor in, in the send mail client, which is the email version of email back in those days. And so it was designed to get onto a system and then go through the contact list by using, sorry, using a floor and send mail to get access to that system, then check out the contact list and get a list of the computers that are nearby and try and access them. I'm going to use F3 to see how deep I am. 43, okay. So digging a little deeper, I'm aiming for diamonds here. So his goal was basically to have this thing spread over the what was then the um well it was kind of they call it the internet but it was you know, it kind of was but it was really only an academic research network so it had sort of limited scope whoops um yeah and so he just said it okay go to this computer and spread to all the computers nearby and he made two mistakes because he just wanted to chart the size of the internet according to the history of what's going on here but the first critical mistake was that he didn't limit how far it would spread and didn't have a kill switch on it to basically turn it off once he'd done its job so it just kept spreading and the second and probably the more important mistake was that when it infected a computer it would spread to all the neighboring computers that's great works precisely as planned but when it spread to a neighboring computer, the problem was it would also spread back to the first computer. And so the problem became, instead of um, infecting a computer once, it would infect it two, three, four, a couple of hundred times as these things bounce back and forth. So it had a slight flaw in that sense well not slight it was my fairly major and that's how people detected it is that it they noticed that the computers that these servers of the day were shutting down they couldn't they didn't have the memory to run so they were running you know a, maybe a small couple of web pages and a few background things and then all of a sudden that grind to a halt and they could just couldn't do stuff and this this problem was spreading so lo and behold this is where the worm uh, caused a massive amount of problem or well, problems because it would basically replicate across entire systems and so as a result the internet ended up basically getting shut down because it the worm would infect reinfect and, and bounce back and forth between computer systems causing massive levels of slowdown because it was running processes in the background. And as a result, oops, this is why I carry a lot of picks because I don't like being picked on. 
Um, yeah, so this massive level of infection caused a problem. Um, now, this is Robert T. Morris Jr. His father was actually a high-level ranking engineer at, I want to say, um, MIT, but who knows? I can't remember for certain. Um, but so as a result, he had a lot of ready access to a lot of the technical documentation for this kind of stuff. And that was basically one of the first major outbreaks. And yeah, watching archival footage of the day, you can laugh at the, the various people in, dressed in very 80s gear, because, well, hey, it was the 80s, um, and the poor little computer nerds of the day. Uh, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. So, yeah, that was, you know, one massive viral outbreak um, caused inadvertently by um, someone who just wanted to explore and muck around with the internet. In fact, the original definition of a, of a hacker um, from MIT days in the 70s and 80s was basically someone who took computer systems and hacked them and see what they could do with them. Um, the meanings, of course, become a lot different these days because you've got hackers, crackers and other people who basically break systems for money or depending on whether you're white hat, black hat or grey hat um, and how they... the reasons behind why they do it. Sorry, it was in a funny place. No, I'm not going to start straightening up corridors. I should stop. Stop now while I can. Yeah, so that's again another sort of large area of computering. That is, whoops, missed. is well worth being aware of because these kind of outbreaks are important to have knowledge of and deal with. Now if I get a creeper here I'm doomed. Okay, a little bit of coal there. Um, so yeah, I mean this is me talking random chunks of computer law and computer knowledge but it's all worth your being aware of it. Um, what else have we got out there? I suppose we've got spyware, which is basically just a thing that infects a web browser that spies on your activity. But, you know, Google, Facebook, most of the big corporate organizations that, um, IT based organizations are far more efficient than that, at that than um, any sort of bit of spyware you could potentially pick up. Because they're tracking you all the time with all sorts of other stuff in the background. Um, oh, there's ransomware. So the idea behind um, ransomware, and here after I talk about um, viruses and payloads. So yeah, a virus will have a payload. So a classic one is the Friday the 13th virus. And what it does is on Friday the 13th, the aforementioned date, it will basically crash your, crash, uh, now what did it do? Crash the system, I think. Um, and it basically just, causes malicious damage that way. Basically, computer users experimenting with, how do we break this? Because if you know how to break something, you can try to work out how to fix it as well. So that's just sort of that one. Another one is the Star Spangled Banner virus. This one would, this is common on the Amiga 500 uh, personal computers and possibly other platforms as well, although I'm not completely certain on that one. And what it would do is, on a floppy disk, which is an old piece of computer hardware, what it would do is it would play the Star Spangled Banner. So it would cause the hard drive, the, the, sorry, not the hard drive, the floppy disk, to uh, basically um, spin up, spin down, to create a tune. And the Star Spangled Banner has this drum section. So what it would do is it would get the two drive heads of the floppy drive and bash them together on the disk head on the on the floppy disk thereby destroying both and this was you know a particularly nasty virus 
but that's in essence what it did. Okay, before anybody asks and says, why the hell are you doing this? I'm sealing up behind me so I don't accidentally go back that way. And this is not the way out, but close enough. Yeah, so in terms of that, those are two, two examples of payloads. One designed to just crash a system. The other designed to destroy hardware. And there are far more examples of stuff out there than just those two. But that's enough of a starting point. So I was going to talk about another, another thing with a fairly interesting payload. Um, oh, yeah, ransomware. So ransomware, again, taking this whole virus idea, it's either in, infects or is implanted on a system. And the idea behind it is that you it, it locks you out of the system, basically sealing it away so you can't get access to whatever's on that system, either through encrypting the system or by uh, corrupting, or not partly corrupting, some of the access points that you when you start up the computer. I think I'm done for now. So I'll just finish off the ransomware quickly and I should go outside and plant some trees so I've got a bit more of a forest to work with. Oh, I left some wood in that one. So once it's infected into the system and uh, got control over it, it is then used as a way of ransoming, henceforth its name, ransomware, uh, or extorting money out of people. And this is basically where it is, and I think the, I don't know if it's the state of Delaware, got hit really badly in the last month. So in terms of how, how the effect of this stuff, what this stuff can have, it's actually fairly major. Uh, and this is, I'm, I'm talking about locking people out of hospital systems and stuff. The kind of stuff that really is quite vile. So in terms of, of that it's a fairly dangerous occurrence and basically the, the the software is written in such a way that it's really difficult to get rid of once your system is encrypted of course encryption makes breaking breaking encryption is another whole video unto itself for reality's sake um, but basically you can't break it and so what they do is what um, is you pay their money via Bitcoin and they will then give you the key to unbreak your system. And that is where ransomware comes from, is people basically using computer knowledge to extort money out of organizations that A, probably can't afford it, or B, running very critical major stuff, uh, such as hospitals. Banks I'm less concerned about, but hospitals definitely are a problem. So there's been a number of cases. I think the UK's, um, what is it? Uh, National Health Service or NHS, again, gets hit every year uh, to the tune of a few million dollars. So regardless of where it is, that's another form of stuff that you need to be aware of. And in some cases, if a computer network or a computer system is appropriately set up, all this information can be backed up and then of course you can restore from that but there are again other things that go on there and that's enough for tonight.